says that Mexico is going to pay for that wall. He, had, he said he had a friendly meeting with the president of Mexico today. The president of Mexico tweeting, he said he's not going to pay for that wall. He told Donald Trump as much. Right. Well, I think the way Donald Trump seems to see this is that this was just the first meeting and that it wasn't really a discussion that he was told uh, this, but that he didn't respond to it and his non-response was, was basically because he does, he, his, at least according to his campaign, it would have been inappropriate to be raising this in the first meeting, but it's something that he would talk about down the line. Uh, Gloria Borger, I, it has been said since that meeting with the president today that um, talking about building a wall and even who's going to pay for it is moot because no one believes that it's going to happen, at least people who are in power now. Obviously, Donald well, it's Trump gonna is going to cost a lot of money. It's yeah. going to cost a lot more money. But they're admitting now that there's, there are mountains, there are ranchers that have to do him and domain. There are lots of things. So the wall is sort of evolving into maybe a virtual <laughs> wall. Well, oh, seriously. Right, I know. And and it's great to talk about building a wall, but you have to pay for it. You have to figure out how to do it. So let me, well, I, he said we are uh, we'll use the best technology, including, including above and below ground sensors, powers, aerial surveillance, uh, manpower to supplement the wall, or to find the, and dislocate tunnels, and keep out the criminal cartels in Mexico. We'll pay for the wall. Right. And the, <laughs> there you go. And the president of Mexico says, we're not going to pay for the wall. Um, I doubt Mexico could pay for the wall. And um, look, these are all questions that are out there. Is Congress going to appropriate the money to pay for the wall? Who's going to control the Congress? I mean, immigration policy is really complicated. Building a wall is really complicated. But it is Donald Trump's signature issue from which he will not ever, ever back back away, period. He's just not going to back down from that. I think that I keep getting back to this point, which we were discussing earlier, which is how can Donald Trump expand the number of voters who are going to vote for him? And the voters you were talking about earlier, Corey, I think may already be with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So how does he expand that to win? Uh, with the suburbanites that we have been talking about in states like uh, Colorado, uh, Florida, for example, maybe even Arizona, um, which he could win, but, but how does he sort of expand that with a speech like this? This is what I don't 
this is what I'm trying to figure out. So, I, again, I think there's two two different things that you just touched on. One, I have to say, I agree with Anna Navarro, which is a very rare thing. She said the president of Mexico had the opportunity to call out Donald Trump yeah. on the carpet and say, you know what? You are going to pay for the wall, and he could have stopped right there. Fair point. He could have done this at press conference. He said, whoa, whoa, we're not paying. He didn't do that. He waited until Donald Trump. At the press he could have done it any time. Right. He could have done it immediately when the press conference was done. He waited until Donald Trump got on the airplane, took off, and then waited two more hours, and then put out a tweet and said, Mexico is not paying for the wall, okay? Well, maybe that's what the conversation was, or maybe that's not what the conversation was. So the president of Mexico, if he was so incensed and so outraged of the notion that Donald Trump is going to come down and say Mexico is paying for the wall, which he has said literally hundreds of times on this campaign, he could have addressed that during his press conference. He chose not to do that because the topic wasn't discussed. The second point was... Do we know that, though? Well, look, I, Donald... We don't know that. Mike Pence, Mike Pence, that's a Pence very fair point. Mike when Pence he had the audience... I agree. With, when he had the audience, the people were watching live with, you know, with Donald Trump standing there, he had the opportunity to call Donald Trump out on that issue, and instead he did it in a tweet. It we need a thought bubble. We need a thought bubble. Governor Pence, Pence said he had a conversation with Mr. Trump on the plane when they got to Phoenix, Arizona, and then he came on the network here and said that conversation did not take place. Now, if we're calling Governor Pence a liar, I don't think that's what we're doing. No. He had a one-to-one -one conversation with the principal who was in that room. He's saying the discussion but, of but the paying the wall didn't take place. I mean, and I thought we were going to get some details tonight. In fact, I think on earlier shows we were talking about the fact well, we were going to get details. It. And I hate to harp on this, but the fact is we don't even give Mexico enough aid yearly to so pay for a small sanctuary city. To pay for a small percentage most of the America, wall. Most a lot, you're gonna defund most large cities in America. I mean nothing about this absolutely. nothing about this is practical. You're gonna defund sanctuary cities, but you you're gonna, but you're practical. also gonna you're also gonna build new deportation you're gonna build new deportation centers where you're gonna house these people. You're also gonna you're also gonna increase the number of ICE agents. Wait, you're gonna build a wall that's twenty five billion dollars. You didn't lay out one and you want a single payer health care. You know what we end up with Obamacare. But that was compromised. But the difference single payer health care was but never a reality. It was the a different promise. One other time. The difference with that is that the president actually got elected. The president began to listen to stakeholders and working with people on the Democratic Party where he got a lot of grief and a lot of hell and on the Republican Party. What we're seeing now is Donald Trump doesn't even have a way to pay for his own plan, and you can't answer that question. There's no way to pay for single-pay health care, which was Obama's answer signature. the question about the look, wall. So, look, I'm getting to the point. When Barack Obama ran for president, he said single-payer health care. And then he got into the office, and he said this is unfeasible, he couldn't get his own party to go along with it, so he changed to a system which is now known as Obamacare. Very different, right? What Donald Trump is saying is, we're building a wall. Any way you slice it, I'm going to build a wall. I'm the greatest builder that's going to get done. And what's going to happen? Hold on, hold on, stop. Once he's elected president in 69 days, he's going to continue to work with Congress to set the priorities for this country of where funding is going to go. Okay, it sounds to me like what you're saying, and I don't know if you're saying this, Maybe the wall could become a fence, no, or it could become just a guard. He's, very clear it's, 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 he's willing to negotiate down. You're saying no. No, no, I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is you still have to fund the wall, and funding starts at Congress by the Constitution. Mm. That's where it begins. And But the president also has his budget. He has to put priorities of what his budget is, he wants Congress to consider, and this is the priority of this campaign. Kirsten Powers, has this wall thing backed him into a corner that, did he back himself into a corner with this wall thing and how he's going to pay for it and exactly how he's going to do it? No, I, I don't. I don't this think so. Nice. I actually think there's maybe a little too much focus on this. Frankly, I, you know, I, I, if, if if he became president yeah. and he wants to negotiate with Mexico and he thinks he could get them to pay for the wall, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. But um, I don't think it's actually just the only problem with this policy. I mean, if we look at what he talked about tonight, we focus on the wall a lot. But this speech really was just a bunch of demagoguery. And that's the first it, thing. That's a, that's the signature of his. Of his yeah, campaign. but it, and that it, was the first thing he mentioned when he mentioned yeah, the first it, point in his plan. That it is, it is, but there are a lot of other things that he talks about that are very, very troubling. Serious. First of all, the fact that he basically presented, as he so often does, this dystopian vision of our country in terms of illegal immigrants, as if we're all living and cowering in fear of them killing our children, when in fact they commit fewer crimes than the average uh, person in America. And so it was heartbreaking to see these parents, but it's also what he's doing is really despicable, presenting it as if illegal immigrants are somehow inherently criminal, violent criminals. You know, and I think other things he's talking about, he said that he was going to have, uh, if he was president, any illegal immigrant who was arrested would be deported immediately. He didn't even say convicted. 
just arresting people and you're going to deport them. We're going to create more deportation wow. centers. Yeah, uh, there are special you know, group under ICE to deport people. ICE already deports people. We don't need another, uh, you know, special force in ICE to be deporting people when the Supreme Court has criticized them for already deporting people that shouldn't be being deported and they overcharge. So there's so many troubling it's things that he talks about and so many misrepresentations. This, this is a uh, uh, five dollar each, uh, not a forty-five degree have, fittings. Um, then I think we can get lots of. But I originally got all, all that they had left. Mark quickly, uh, Jim McGovern. And then I found the other right. these are campaign oh, yeah. promises that are not that are not rooted in reality. And I we found often see uh, campaign promises that are made by those who are seeking uh, the White House, and by the time uh, they win, and the they ones have that, to deal uh, with the legislative branch. It's, it's just I'm not saying the name goes. I can hear. Though you will never hear this from Donald Trump's mouth, is that we'll have to cut a deal when we get to Congress. There is no way that Republicans in Congress, let alone Democrats, are going to go along with an infrastructure spending that the United States will have to put forward to build this wall. Corey Lewandowski and Gloria Borger will get to respond right after this. <laughs> I can't pull it off politically.